Hello and welcome to Crosstalk. My name is Elijah Weiss and I'm a Jewish believer in Jesus Christ. Our hearts here at Crosstalk hurt for what's happening in Israel right now. In light of the current situation, today's episode will be my grandfather talking about what's happening in Israel and linking it to Paul's message when he was in Thessalonica. We also sat with my grandfather and we got to ask him questions about what's currently happening in Israel. Enjoy. So the title of this message is The Apostle Paul and Hamas. Paul was not a member. (laughs) In Thessalonica, Paul taught in the synagogues on three separate Sabbaths. Not a very long stay for such a memorable influence. Most Christians only know of Thessalonica, which is a community in Greece as a result of Paul. He preached three sermons there in three weeks, and uh, he wrote a couple of letters to the church at Thessalonica that made it into the New Testament. And that's, again, I think the reason why people outside of Greece have heard of the city. From The 17th chapter of the book of the Acts of the Apostles, we know one sentence from the three sermons that he preached. It says, This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Messiah. Apparently, Paul's proclamation of the Messiahship of Jesus was convincing because the scripture goes on and says that at least... uh, uh, Some of the Jews were persuaded. Some of the Jews were persuaded. They heard the message in the synagogue and it rang true. The Spirit of God touched their hearts. They were persuaded. That's the way it works. People hear of this Jesus, this gospel, and the Spirit of God reveals that it's the truth and they're persuaded. It's highly likely that during Paul's few weeks in town, he didn't limit his testimony of his faith in Jesus to his three Saturday morning church services. This preacher was not restrained or distracted from reaching the community outside the four walls that housed his pulpit. We know this because in addition to those few Jews who heard Paul's sermon and were persuaded to believe in Jesus, there were also, what Scripture tells us, was a large number of God-fearing Greeks and quite a few prominent women. These also joined with Paul and Silas along with those Jews who had believed Paul's sermons. I guess we'll never know for sure how many of the Greeks, the aristocratic women, and the God-fearer Gentiles, how many of them were one to the faith in the Thessalonica fruit market, the Thessalonica first bank and trust, or Temple Bethel on Thessalonica's south side where Paul preached. And I don't know if it was on the south side. What I do know is where I grew up, and in many old downtown areas or some south side locations, our former temples are now Baptist churches because, well, there's just too few Jewish families remaining to support a synagogue. Be it white flight, disinterest, or conversion, maybe birth control, population shifts. Somehow things have impacted urban Judaism. And you need to know that anti-Semitism has probably had something to do with it too. It's sad to say, but anti-Semitism is real across many parts of America and many parts of the world, and it's getting worse because of world events. 
many Jews fear for their future. I wish it, I wish that was not true, but sadly it's very true and it's tragic. And we see people kind of picking sides, joining teams. Are they with Israel? Are they with the Jews? Or are they against Israel and for the enemies of Israel? That might be one reason many Jews resent Christ, Christianity, and Christians. We fear racism, anti-Semitism, assimilation, and losing our identity, our culture, our traditions, and our people. Maybe, just maybe, this will help us choose to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I want to tell you that as a Jewish man, my people the Jewish people. They need to see Christians stand with Israel when it's not popular. In Paul's case, in Thessalonica, the non-Christian Jews, who were most of the Jews in that city, because Paul's the one who brought the message there, and it was a new thing to those who heard it, most of the Jews were not supportive of this new message. And in Thessalonica, I think the circumstance went beyond just not being for it. In fact, it was, again, I'm embarrassed to say it, but it was a Jewish-inspired hatred of Jewish Christians. And by the way, there are still many Jews who are happy to respect and accept Christianity for Christians, particularly for Gentile Christians. They simply dislike Christianity for Jews. It reeks of assimilation to non-Christian Jews. For that reason, many Jews can't tolerate Jews like me, who love the God of Israel, the people of Israel, and the Jewish Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeshua is the Hebrew name of Jesus. Mashiach is the title, uh, Messiah. To them, to those who don't believe like I believe, we are often seen as traitors. To be clear, I believe the message preached by Paul. Remember, he said, This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Messiah. To that I say, Me too, me too. That is also my message. That is what I believe. But what became of Paul and his new Christian friends in Thessalonica? Well, some of the Jews in town became jealous of Paul. He was generating interest, support, followers. Their dislike and envy turned ugly. The Bible says they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, formed a mob, and started a riot in the city. That's real ugly. It sounds like the way things happen today. Protesters often are gathered by angry leaders of every imaginable political cause, so-called social justice movements, or extremist religious calls to action. Riots have broken out in Chicago, Minneapolis, Portland, Seattle, Kenosha, Atlanta, London, Paris, Washington, D.C. They pop up all over the globe. And I don't think that they're all organic. I think some are orchestrated. People gather for what they believe will be a peaceful protest. Then suddenly, 
rabble rousers and paid troublemakers are brought in by organized activists to turn a protest into a riot. Voila! News reporters, social media, viral hatred. People get hurt. News sites build followers from these things like clickbait. It happened when Black Lives Matter gatherings went awry. It happened when people disagreed with election results. It's happened when news media twisted facts or simply reported intentional fake news to create the public outcry they believed was appropriate. That's not journalism. It's propaganda. One despicable example happened in the early days of the war started by Hamas against Israel in October of 2023. After Hamas launched an unexpected large-scale air, sea, and ground war against Israel's civilians, the horrors of war were unleashed in a rapid counteroffensive. Thousands of innocent Israeli babies, children, young concert goers, and elderly men and women were killed, wounded, taken hostage by terrorists, or displaced due to a constant barrage of Hamas rockets and missiles launched against civilian locations, intentionally launched against civilian locations. This, my friend, this is a war crime. These are all war crimes. You don't target civilians. Civilized nations, civilized people protect civilians. But in Israel, that's how the enemy of Israel behaves. The Hamas-controlled Palestinian territory of Gaza became an overnight war zone. Israel broadcast messages throughout northern Gaza that all Palestinian civilians should evacuate to the south immediately. Israel dropped thousands of leaflets with detailed warnings that it would be unsafe for them to remain in the area soon to come under intense bombardment. Hamas continued firing rockets from northern Gaza incessantly, often from civilian locations so they could hide. Israel was forced to react with more clear warnings to the civilian population. Get out! Get out now! Go south! Of course, everyone hoped Egypt would open their border and allow these civilians running from Hamas, the, the, they're, they're captive in their own region to the brutality of Hamas. Many would have been thrilled to just cross the border into Egypt where other Arab brothers could have received them, but thus far it was just not to be. Unlike Hamas, who launched a calculated, cold-blooded attack intentionally directed to murder, rape, torture, and kidnap Israel's civilians. Israel forewarned the Hamas murderers exactly where Israel's counterattack would come, and they did it to beg the innocent civilians to leave the area in advance of this publicly broadcast bombardment that was announced and promised to come. Israel wanted to avoid unnecessary civilian casualties, but they were absolutely going to go after their enemies, Hamas. Hamas did everything they could to stop civilians from leaving because they would be losing their protection, their human shields, war crimes. So, we just taped a bunch of stuff about Israel being at war and things that are going on. 
uh, I think it's important that we don't take for granted that everybody does understand because everybody doesn't. If everybody understood, I think things would be different. I think it's harder to understand like when you're going through it, you know, so those people that are down there going in this going through this war, will they understand? You know, like so the message um, it's, it's it's a good it's a good message what you said and um, I understood exactly but just looking at it in the point of view of them would I want to like you know watch it and, and yeah. could I relate to what you were saying and things like that because those are the individuals who are, who are actually going through it right now. You know, Israel is world renowned for having superior intelligence systems. Uh, the Israeli Defense Forces, uh, the IDF, the, the Iron Dome Missile Protection System, uh, the, the Mossad, the, the, you know, their FBI, their CIA, their NSA, they're first class, they're top flight. They teach, they teach others around the world how to protect their citizens. And um, they didn't see this coming. Israel has been so careful to not permit terrorist acts just to, to dominate their society. And uh, they dropped the ball. What has occurred is terrorists, they're nothing less than terrorists. Don't let anybody tell you they're freedom fighters. Don't let anybody tell you that they're uh, like a government with a military. Governments, real governments of real nations don't go and target civilians. Mm -hmm. These terrorists successfully pulled off the most efficient, violent, devastatingly successful campaign. Nothing like this has happened in the last 50 years. So explain to me, from what I heard, you know, there's stuff all over the media, but I really don't understand, like, what actually happened. Hamas, which is one of the ruling parties among the Palestinian peoples, they are the government that controls the Gaza Strip, where there are over two million Palestinians living. Uh, again, it, it's to me it seems like a misnomer to call them a government. They're monsters, they're terrorists who are just in charge. They're thugs. And what they did was they launched thousands of rockets against Israel into civilian locations. Thousands. Okay? Not hundreds, but several thousand. They've been launching, thousands of rockets have been being launched at Israel for an ongoing period of time. This is not new. The Iron Dome system has traditionally succeeded in destroying them before they landed in, in populated areas. That system can be overwhelmed. There was an effort by Hamas, very likely funded by Iran and other rogue players out there who hate Israel, who hate America, who want to destroy Israel. They, the reason I would say you can't call Hamas a government because, is because they, their population is in the nation that they want to destroy. Mm -hmm. their, their charter, you know, you, you, can't, you can't negotiate peace with a government whose constitution, whose charter calls for the destruction 
of Israel. They want to annihilate the Jews. So you can't really negotiate with a government mm -hmm. that's committed to your destruction. All you can do is try to contain them and protect your innocent citizens. And do what you can to protect the innocent Palestinian people who are dominated and oppressed by these thugs who consider themselves to be a government. So it's their own people. Yes. So they're oppressing their own people as well as the Jews. They're, they're corrupt. You know, hundreds of millions of dollars, even billions of dollars have flowed into the hands of Palestinians. Mm -hmm. But instead of improving the conditions of the Palestinians, building roads, building schools, building hospitals, instead they build tunnels and they buy weapons, they bring in missiles so they can shoot them at innocent civilian targets in Israel. And then they use the innocent Palestinian people as human shields to protect them so that when Israel retaliates, Israel has to be very circumspect in what they do. So Palestinian terrorists, known as Hamas, will literally set up military rocket sites. They'll shoot rockets. They'll, they'll have people trying to kill Israelis mm. stationed in schools or hospitals or orphanages so that Israel can't just get rid of the terrorists right. yeah, because good. Israel doesn't want to wipe out civilians, the, the innocent, yeah. arbitrarily. So what, what's, what's the end goal? Like, what is what, what do they want to accomplish? What will stop the war? Loss. Mm. The only thing that will stop the war from their perspective is the destruction of Israel. Mm. They are totally committed to wiping Israel out, taking back the land. That's a whole different story. Uh, for the most part, this was not their land to begin with. For the most part, these are Arabs, Jordanians. That's a different story, though. You asked what actually happened. So thousands of rockets were fired. At the same time, they came by land. They bulldozed pieces of the security fence, areas of the security fence, the border fence. Mm -hmm. And they, they overran sections of Israel's security While physically. While the missiles are, are being... Blown. Yes. Simultaneously, they, had, they came from the air with uh, small airplane type devices, glider. Oh, uh, like the drone. No, they were manned. Oh, they're all. Like gliders, like they're in. Yeah, them. and, and paragliders or, uh, oh. there's, uh, they flew small motorized devices over the fences into the civilian areas of Israel. They also, entered some military sites, and they came by sea, because it, it's a coastal region. They came by boat, by air, by land, and by sea, simultaneously with the rockets. This was a coordinated, planned, well-executed operation. And that's why I say it's stunning what they accomplished it's horrifying to the Israelis because they never, nobody thinks they had any idea this was going to happen. With the intelligence, uh, the intelligence capabilities that Israel has, my opinion is that this was all done old school, you know, paper and pencil. Right. You know, I mean, this, this, the, the, the Israel didn't, couldn't hack this. Israel couldn't intercept these, these right. things, these messages. I, we don't, I don't know how it occurred. 
but it occurred. Now, how would you feel if you were with your family and you woke up one morning and there was pounding on your door? You knew that there had been rockets fired because when the rockets are being fired, there are alarms. Mm -hmm. But there had never been so m much of a ground assault by Palestinians that they they invaded Israel. They invaded Israel. And you get a knock at the door, pounding on your door, and it's not the Israeli police, it's not the Israeli Defense Forces, it's Hamas militants with guns coming in to kill you, kidnap you, destroy your existence. Because that's what was happening. Innocent people. Absolutely innocent people. There were some soldiers captured as well when certain smaller military installations were overrun. But what people need to understand is this was well orchestrated and the goal was to capture civilians and take them hostages. They took women, children, grandparents, and they just grabbed them and carried them back into Gaza. They took them in trucks, on motorbikes. They terrorized them all along the way, and now they're held hostage. Man. Perhaps hundreds. The Palestinian terrorists know how Israel values the life of their citizens. The lives of their citizens are paramount. There was an Israeli soldier named Gilad Shalit, I think is his name, young man. And he was captured and held hostage. And they negotiated, Israel negotiated the release of one Israeli citizen at the cost of a thousand Palestinian terrorists that had been in prison. Okay? What does that tell you? Israel, value their people. Israel values the lives of their citizens. What does that tell you about terrorists? They don't. They don't value life at all. They don't right. value our lives. They don't value their lives. They don't value their families' lives. Right. Because they know what they did in this recent incursion. They know they have no doubt that no matter what they do now, they will pay a price. And it won't just be them because Israel must retaliate. Yeah. And when they do, it'll be them and not only them, their loved ones, their families, their neighbors that are going to pay the price. Yeah. See, they don't value human life. Yeah. Suicide bombers have no intention of getting away. All they want to do is kill as many people as they can, yeah. including themselves. That's sad. Please think about these things and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Till next time, Shalom.